we're convicted. We're not here to start no trouble. We're leaving everybody to the sex offender trouble. Hello, chat. Why do people say muted before the stream has even started? I just don't understand. Yes, I'm late. I'm late because the internet didn't work, and then, like, it didn't work in general, and the, I, I tried fucking with it, and then involved, I had, like, a little Wi-Fi chip on my laptop to extend its range, and I ended up pulling that out, and then it wouldn't reconnect. Like, the Wi-Fi chip was just like, no, nah, I'm not going to work anymore, so I had to restart my computer, which means that I had to restart my browser, which I had already set up with all the clips and stuff preloaded, so then I had to set everything back up again. It was a nightmare. And then my monitor was unplugged. <laughs> I just, it's going to be nice. One day I'm going to have an office with a computer in it. And uh, I will be able to stream from office with computer. But that is a far flung uh, fantasy, a, a very distant future, not currently coinciding with my, my existent reality. Anyways, chat, uh, let's, should we, I guess since the stream is so late, I can just jump right into the stuff that's actually fun to talk about, can't I? That's the benefit of being late, is that people actually have a time to, to show up. Um, yeah, let's just do the Pokemon shit. So, let's just, let's not, let's not skirt around this. Uh, someone hacked Game Freak. Game Freak is the company which has produced Pokemon, one of the most successful media franchises in human history. Uh, in terms of its total profitability across all of its media, all of its games, its television series, its uh, merchandise, and, and so on and so forth. I think it's like, for whatever reason, it's neck and neck with Hello Kitty. For what I think China has single-handedly made Hello Kitty a thing for Asian people. White people don't really care about Hello Kitty, but I think the Chinese market has uh, spent trillions of dollars into the Hello Kitty. Uh, Hello Kitty is like a secret, like, massive corporation. It's the real, like, dark cabal. You want to know who runs the world, who's pulling the, sh the, the strings, who's the shadowy cabal that hides behind the curtains, manipulating the flow of, of the world economy. It's not BlackRock. It's not the Jews. It's Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty has an amassed an incredible amount of wealth entirely off Asian people, and they use it to exploit us. Um, do we? Do I don't? Man, I think putting the hamster up is a bad idea, but we'll do it. They put the pumpkin hamster in there. We'll do pumpkins. This is pretty spooky, I guess. Uh, so, Pokemon hacked. What did they release? A lot of stuff from the development cycles, going all the way back to uh, Silver and Gold, which is a little bit crazy. Um, old, uh, m like, beta versions of compositions, design documents regarding map layouts and puzzles in the games, uh, early editions of sprites, and lore. Uh, details about the characters... Uh, the in universe, because when you kind of when you are writing a, a fictional universe, what people will do is they'll actually write out like a bunch of stuff, and then when they develop their game plot or they develop the world from uh, f for the user, they derive a lot of things that happen from the whole universe that is written, and um, when it's doing correctly, you can just make shit up as you go, of course. But a very well established world usually has. Uh, a trove of lore that doesn't actually get published and it helps inform the world so that as the the player plays or or the reader reads um they get hints that there's something bigger than just what they're experiencing because there is um Tolkien of course is a master of this there's so much can non-canonical like extra lore to the Tolkien universe that was just things that he mused about in his spare time and as a result uh, the Tolkien books were very rich because there was always a sense that the uh, the world, the universe, Middle Earth and shit existed outside of just the actual narrative fiction that people read. Uh, and Pokemon, as I as I wind back to the topic at hand, Pokemon decided to do this in a very Japanese way, with lots of bestiality rape fanfiction between Pokemon and humans. 
um, Japanese people that were responsible for the creation of Pokemon decided that they would ape some real-life Japanese mythology into the Pokemon universe, which, of course, as it is Japanese mythology, includes rape. So, uh, here are these stories that were plucked out for me. I've not actually read through them. Oh, I spoiled something, but... Oh, it's going to get spoiled anyways. Let's just get it out of the way. Uh, this is what we're this is what we're breaching into. Okay, let's let's no bones about it. We're getting to flosion here. Okay, let's uh, start the stream off right with uh, bestiality pornography. Theme: the relationship between humans and Pokemon. Human like ways of thinking. Long ago, when the boundary between Pokemon and humans was unclear, there was a village someday somewhere. One day, a girl from that village went to the mountains to gather firewood. She found well-dried, deep wood deep in the forest, so she kept going further in, before she realized that the sun was setting, and she had lost her way. Uh, the man says, you must be lost. I know the way down the mountain, but with your pace, it would be midnight before we get there. I'll take you back in the morning, so why don't you rest at my place tonight? Um, he says, this, you must be hungry. Eat this, let's sleep for the night. Even if you wake up before I do, don't look at my face. The next morning when the girl woke up, the man was asleep. She honored their promise, stayed laying down and waiting. Before long, she fell back asleep. Uh, she was awakened by the man's voice. She looked inside, the sun was already setting. We'll eat green berries, wait here. Um, and then he said again, don't look at my face. Uh, the same routine continued, with them waking up when the sun had set, and the man going out gather berries, and the two of them eating and sleeping together. Eventually, the girl realized that the man was a Tiflosian. As winter approached, the Tiflosian dug deeper into the cave and said to the girl, Go and gather firewood for the firewood. Break off the branches from the higher parts of the tall trees. Um... One day when she was awoke, the girl was holding a child. What? Where did that come from? After several days, the Tiflosian said, Your father is looking for you, but you are my wife, so I can't return you. I will have to fight him. The girl pleaded, Please don't do that. Don't kill my father. How can I live with you if you kill my family? You are a good person. Please stay here with me and sleep. Um, Tiflosian said, Your father is close by. Go and see. Where did the child come from? Is that how they described that there was like a relationship between them? One day, when she awoke, the girl was holding a child. Yeah, that's a weird way of, like, jump-skipping time and saying, like, they had a family or whatever together. Um, the snowstorm was raging. Don't kill oh, I heard that. Um, the flosion went outside. Wait. The girl said, please don't do it. Don't kill my father. If anyone is to be killed, let it be you. Goodbye, we'll never meet again. So she said, I'd rather you die than my father. And the Tiflosian said, okay, fine. He went outside and there was a loud noise. The girl looked outside and her father had killed the Tiflosian. She rushed out and said to her father, Father, you have killed my husband. I have been living with him all this time. He was my husband. Please give me a husband. The Tiflosian's eyes, voice, and heart. The girl built a fire at the place where the Tiflosian had been killed and put his eyes, voice, and heart into the flame. She sang the sign the Tiflosian had taught her until the fire burned out. Um, the young men teased and tormented the girl and her child. It became worse over time than one day they tried to drape a Tiflosian pelt over them. The girl returned home and pleaded with her parents, Please tell the villagers to stop teasing us. If they put that pelt on us, we will surely become Tiflosian. We are already half Tiflosian as it is. Despite the parents' pleas, the villagers did not listen. In fact, they found it even more amusing and eventually draped the Tiflosian pelt over the girl and her child. At that moment, they howled loudly and vanished into the depths of the forest. The two were never seen again. And so people became to understand Tiflosians are half human beings. This is fucking psychotic. Like, I expected weird, gross, Japanese bestiality porn. I, I'm, like, I understand the Japanese as like, a, as, like, a predator understands prey. But this I was not expecting. This, like, truly, truly schizophrenic nonsense. Okay, this is called the collapse of the culture and relationships. Um, in a coastal village, there was a man. One day he was walking around. He found a female octillery washed up on the beach. From what I understand, that's like a squid. The man had relations with the octillery and then threw it back to the sea. The next day, he went to the same spot and same, found the same octillery again. What a slut. He had once more relations with it and threw it back to the sea. 
Uh, in the dream, the artillery spoke to him, I cannot come to you, but I will deliver our child to you. It is our child, yours and mine. The next morning, the man went to the place where he met the artillery. There he found a boy. The man took the boy home and raised him. Time passed. The boy grew into a young man, and the father passed away. The young man was always lonely. One day, as the young man was walking along the shore, he saw a group of people playing in the distance. They were all holding very large swords in their hands as they danced. The young man approached the people, and as he got closer, he saw that Sharpedo was playing along the beach. How does a shark play on the beach? I guess in the water? When he tried to get even closer, the Sharpedo suddenly leapt into the sea all at once. However, one of the Sharpedo lingered, looking around three times before swimming away. At the spot where the Sharpedo had been playing, there was a large sword lying on the ground. It was in the shape he had never seen before. It was very sharp and pointed. The young man took the sword home. The next day, the young man took the sword and went to the forest. While walking through the forest, he encountered a Yuzering, which is a bear. Um, he tried slashing at the Ursaring's mouth with the sword, and the mouth was easily severed. Wow, what the fuck? Next, he stabbed the Ursaring's eyes, and they were easily pierced. Finally, the young man thrust the sword into the Ursaring's chest, and the Ursaring died effortlessly. That day, the young man had killed 30 Ursaring. Oh my god. After that, he always carried the sword with him. Playing by injuring the Pokemon he encountered or cutting parts off their bodies. Sounds kind of like an asshole. One autumn, while the young man was searching for firewood, he had lost his way. After walking for a while, he stumbled upon an Urzering's den. Inside, there was an elderly Urzering lying down. The elderly Urzering looked at the young man and said, Come inside. The young man hesitated, but as it was getting dark outside, he entered the den. Before long, people began to enter the den one after the other, filling the room completely. Looking closer, he saw that all the people had scarred faces, and some of them were missing their eyes. They were chatting among themselves, but the young man ignored them and fell asleep. <laughs> I, if you're like the number one Urzering murderer in the entire world, and an old one invites you into his den and it's filled with people, I'm not going to be like, yeah, I'm checking out. See y'all in the morning. Peace. Don't touch my very pointy sword, by the way, that I have with me. That's nonsense. Okay, so he laid down in the den for some reason, even though the bears have circled him. When spring arrived, so he like stayed there an entire year. The elderly Urzering said, Do you want to go home? Then I shall send you home. When you return, a whale lord will soon be found near your village. Go there, we will send a man. You must leave the sword behind and bring a witness. Why did you do such things, cutting faces and slicing off noses? The elderly Ursling escorted the young man back to the village. Upon his return, the young man recounted everything that had happened to the villagers. The following morning, the young man took the villagers with him and headed to the shore. As they walked along the coast, they found a large whale lord. Nearby on the beach was a teddy Urza. When it noticed the young man, the teddy Urza hid in the forest. The large Ursling came out in its place. The Ursling charged him. The young man tried to draw the sword he had hidden, but it got stuck and he couldn't pull it out. So he rushed at the Ursling with his bare hands. They punched each other's faces, they strangled each other, and they choked each other to death, collapsing on top of one another. The villagers went back and told the others, what the fuck is the point of this? So he murdered a bunch of people, then trusted one for no reason whatsoever, left him sword, and then went to go see a whale and died. That is a very Japanese story. Japanese, I'm telling you, Japanese people can't tell a story for shit. Nobody plays Pokemon for the fucking story. Okay... Two men lived by hunting Pokemon. The men went in the west were not particularly skilled, but he had set followed rules. In the east, a skilled hunter often neglected these rules. They went to hunt and saw a Rapidash on the plain. Its lush mane shone beautifully in the sun. Its mane is fire. I imagine that it shines beautifully even at night because it is flame. As the man from the west ready his bow, the Rapidash spoke, We have children now. If I die, there will be none of us left in this plain. The man in the west lowered his bow and said, Then I will not kill you. However, I desire your beautiful mane, so I ask that you will become my wife. Okay. The Rapidash became the wife of the man from the west. About two months, when the Ponita began appearing in the plains, the man from the west was riding on the back of his wife, the Rapidash, running across the plain. How do you not get set on fire when you do that? They reached a place where many Rapidash and Ponita were resting. The wife said, there are my husbands. If you need, you may hunt them. If you treat them with care, they will not die. However, do not kill the female Rapidash or Ponyta. The female Rapidash are my sisters, and the Ponyta are my children. This means the female Rapidash are your sisters-in-law, and the Ponyta are your, like your children. 
I mean, I think they're literally, unless he's like, I think he's sharing. He says, that, okay, so she says these are my husbands. So he is sharing this horse. This is very weird. A few days later, the man from the east went out hunting. When he reached the plains, he saw the ponyta. Immediately, he shot an arrow and killed it. As he continued looking for more prey, he encountered a rapidash. It was a female rapidash. The rapidash tried to say something, but the man from the east ignored it and shot his arrow. He then cut off the man of the rapidash he had killed and, proud of the beautiful man, decided to show it off to the man from the west. He wrapped the man around his head and headed home. Eventually, tired of walking, the man from the east decided to rest upon a large tree by the lake. As the man from the west and his wife, the Rapidash, walked along the lake shore. They saw a glimpse of the Rapidash's mane under the shadow of the big tree. He has male. He has no children, so if you need, you may hunt him, said the wife. The man shot an arrow at the Rapidash. When they approached the play, he found the man from the east laying there wrapped in the Rapidash's mane. Oh my god. She tricked him into killing the guy. So this is like a nine. She says, take this man back with you, and as you hunt the Rapidash, follow the rules I have told you. So she she fucked this dude, and then can, tricked him into hunting the other hunter. And then she, like, threatens him and says, follow the rules I have told you. I guess implying that if he doesn't, she's going to have sex with some other random Japanese man and trick him into... Killing him. Okay, that's very weird. Uh, so there were memes. I've already showed this one, which I had loaded up. Uh, this one is uh, specifically for Nick Ricada, who may appreciate it. However, uh, people also notice this. The documents have authorship, chat. The documents have authors. And indeed, it appears to be a woman named Yu Nakatsui. Now, I have been told and warned many times, chat, that the female Gunnar Menace is a thousand times worse, even, than the male Gunnar Menace. But is it? Further research indicates that Nyu Nakatsui was originally Suguru Nakatsui. The weird Pokemon pornography lore that you've just heard is the creation of a tranny chat. A Japanese 2000s tranny wrote, wove into the, the game freak lore. Pokemon sucks. <laughs> so... N don't don't worry if you're angry about this to know that your childhood game has this weird menacing Japanese animal sex vibe in the background. Just keep in mind who really did it. Um, there's one more thing that I have. Oh, the uh, the um, Pokemon. Wait, not the Pokemon. The um, what's it called? Oh, the fans. Uh, the fans are angry. Poke for relax says, okay, so now literally the entire po plot of Pokemon Horizons has fully leaked. All the characters, Pokemon, storylines, backstories, plot twists, climaxes, ideas, world building, character returns, and more. I'm actually so gutted, man. Genuinely heartbroken. I don't understand how. And then out of context, Pokemon breaking character says, the only thing these leakers deserve is a huge find and a nice long vacation in prison. They played with fire. Now they'll reap what they sowed. Still, I feel bad for the employees that worked hard on this. They don't deserve this kind of treatment. These motherfuckers want people put in fucking jail for spoiling the plot of Pokemon, a game that has no plot. You just walk around and solve the boulder maze, and then you throw balls at feral animals and train them to kill other animals like like a bunch of pit bulls with special powers. But people need to go in jail for that, I guess. Oh, I forgot. We have to turn the, um, the slow-mo back. Oh, thank fucking God, bro. Yeah, I never understood that. I've always had slow mo on on all of my stream chats because like there are people who will sit there for a four hour long stream and spam the same fucking message every second for hours and hours and hours straight. And it's like I 
don't understand what it's like. Um, like if you put that guy in a in a fucking chair with like a peanut button, they'll just sit there tapping the peanut button forever, like a little monkey. Um. Cool. Josh hates Pokemon because his mom didn't let him get a Pikachu tattoo. I could have gotten a Pikachu tattoo if I wanted to. Thank you for watching this clip. This is Perspicacity. Remember to like and subscribe.